Hello guys, this is the part 5 of the tutorials for SOAP, the scriptable object architecture. In this video, we will continue showcasing how to use SOAP to set up the experience bar and implement various abilities. We will also make an ability selector that appears when we level up and let us choose among three random abilities. Let's start by creating an experience bar UI to visualize the experience. First, let's temporarily disable the game over panel so that we can see what we are doing. Now, let's select our canvas and create a new UI panel. Let's name it X bar and move it below the health bar UI. Let's remove the image sprite, set the pivot to the top of the screen, set the X anchors to 0 0.3 and 0 0.7, and set the left and right offsets to 0. Then, let's set the Y position to minus 10 and the height to 50. Now let's create a child image. Make it scale to fit its parent and change the image color to black. Let's duplicate this image, choose a temporary filling image, like UI Sprite, for example, and change the color to cyan. Let's change the image type to filled and the fill method to horizontal. We can mess around with the slider to see how it looks like. As you can see, the sprite we are using is not great. We need a simpler sprite. Let's create one quickly. To create it, we need to install the 2D sprite package. Let's install it quickly from the package manager. Once it is installed, we can right-click in the project view, then go to Create, 2D, Sprites, Square. Nice! Now let's use this sprite in our image. We can see that it looks like a typical experience bar. Now let's add a bind filling image component and assign the experience as the float variable we want to track. For the max value, let's go ahead and create a new variable. Let's call it float max experience. Let's also set its initial value to 100. Now, let's create a new text as a child of this image. Let's make it bold. Set it to auto size and center it. Let's attach a bind text mesh pro component and set float as the variable type. We can now reference our experience float variable. Let's test this. Let's enter play mode and collect a few experience pickups. Nice, we can see that it works properly. Now let's create a few abilities. It is going to be similar to pickups and use inheritance. However, this time we will use scriptable objects. So, let's start by creating the base class and call it ability data. Then, let's open it in our code editor. First, let's make it inherit from scriptable object. And because it is the base class, let's make it abstract. By the way, an abstract class in C-sharp means that you are forced to inherit from it if you want to create an instance of it in your game. Let's also remove start and update as we will not need them. Alright, now we will expose a reference to a string to write a description for the ability. We make it protected because we want to access it from the child classes. We will also create a public int property called apply count that will have a protected setter. This property will be used to keep track of how many times the ability has been applied. Then, we can create a virtual method, apply, that will simply increment the apply count. We will also make an abstract method that returns a string to get the description. We will see later why it is useful to make it abstract. Finally, we will implement a reset method and make sure the apply count is reset to zero. OK, it's done. Let's go back to the editor. Let's start by creating a simple ability that will increase the movement speed of our player. Increasing the speed is technically adding a value to a float variable. So let's create a new class and call it floatability data. First, let's make this class inherit from our ability data class and let's implement the abstract method. Let's add the create asset menu attribute and give it a menu name like ability data slash floatability. This way, we can create this ability data from our project window. Let's also delete start and update. All right, now let's expose a float variable for the variable we want to modify. As we can add or multiply a stat depending on the ability, let's create an enum to reflect that. Let's call it increment operation. Then, let's expose a reference to it so we can set it from the inspector. Let's also expose a float reference for the increment value. You already see the similarities with our pickup logic. Finally, let's expose a boolean, is%. That will determine if this increment is in percentage or not. 
Let's make it true by default. Now, let's override the apply method. If the increment operation is an addition, then let's simply add the increment. If it is a multiplication, let's copy the increment value locally. Then, if the is% boolean is true, set the increment to be 1 plus the increment, divided by 100. We can then multiply our float variable by this increment. Finally, we call the base method to increment the apply count. Let's also override the get description method. This method will simply return a formatted string that will replace the argument by the increment value in the description. All right, let's create the ability data now. Let's go back to the editor. First, let's go to our project window and create a new folder and call it ability data. Then, inside, let's right click, go to create ability data and select our float ability. Let's rename it to ability move speed. Now let's configure it. Let's open it in a new window by using the properties panel. For the description, let's write move speed plus 0% where zero is the argument that will be replaced by our increment value. For the float variable, let's create a new one and call it float player speed multiplier. Let's set its initial value to one. For the operation we want to multiply, and for the increment, let's set a local value to 25 for now. Because it is a percentage, let's leave our ice percent boolean to true. Let's save this by pressing Ctrl plus S. Let's go now to our player movement script and expose a float reference and call it speed multiplier. Then in code, we can multiply by our speed multiplier. Now let's go back to the editor and assign it the float variable we just created. Awesome, that's it for the move speed ability. Now let's create an ability that will increase the fire rate. It's very easy. We select our move speed ability and duplicate it. Let's rename it to ability fire rate. Now we can just change the data. For the description, let's change move speed to fire rate. Let's create a new float variable and call it float fire rate. Let's reference it. Now let's go to our prefab weapon and reference this new variable instead of the local value. That's it. It took exactly five seconds to create this ability. Let's create another one. Let's duplicate this ability and rename it to ability max health. Let's change the description and reference our max health variable. That's it for the ability setup. However, we need to adapt the code for it to work without bugs. Let's go to the player health script. Since we clamp the health to the max health in start, we are stuck with this limit during the game. Instead, we want to be able to increase our max health and reclamp our health to the new value. This is very easy to do with SOAP. In start, let's register to the onValueChanged event of our max health. Let's create a new method and name it onMaxHealthChanged. Now in this method, we want to reclamp the health to the new max health value. Done. Depending on your game design choices, you could decide to heal or not the player. Here we are going to do it. First, let's calculate the amount gained, which is the difference between the new value and the max health previous value. Then we can just add this amount to the current health. Finally, we should not forget to unregister from the onValueChanged event on destroy. Another ability we can do quickly is one that increases the amount of experience gained when collecting an experience pickup. Let's duplicate the fire rate ability and rename it to ability exp multiplier. In the description, we can change fire rate to experience gained. Let's create a new variable and rename it to float experience multiplier. And let's reference it in our ability data. Now, let's open our float variable pickup script. Let's add another float reference and call it multiplier. Then, we simply multiply the value by this variable. Okay, now we can go back to the inspector and adjust our pickups prefabs. Let's open our XP pickup first. In the multiplier slot, let's reference our experience multiplier variable and save the prefab. Now, in our health pickup, we don't have a multiplier, so we can take advantage of the flexibility of float references and assign a local value of one. Nice. Now that we have the experience variable and the abilities, we just need some UI to be able to select them and to level up. Let's do that. First, let's create a new panel under our canvas and call it ability selector. 
Let's move it above our game over screen so that it renders before it. Let's color the image in black as this will serve as our background. Then let's create a new panel and change its size to something like this. Let's change the background color to black and make it more opaque. Then let's round the borders by adjusting the pixel per multiplier. I think 0.15 looks good. Now let's add a vertical layout group and set some paddings. 50 on each side with a spacing of 25. Finally, let's set the child alignment to middle center and enable the child control size for width and height. Now let's create a new button and call it Ability Selector button. Let's reduce the opacity to 100. Then let's select the text, make it bold, enable auto size, set the max size to 45 and change the color to white. Let's also write a placeholder text to see what it looks like. Finally, let's duplicate the text and move it slightly below. Let's remove the bold, set the max size to 35 and make it a bit more gray. For the placeholder text we can write, applied two times. Now let's create a new subfolder in our prefab folder and call it UI. Then we can make a prefab by dragging it here. Now that it's a prefab, we can duplicate it two times so that we have three buttons. All right, now that our ability selection UI is set up, we can start implementing the logic. First, we will decide when to display or hide the ability panel. Let's select our ability selector and add a new component. Bind comparison to Unity event. In this case, we want to show the panel when the experience is bigger or equal than a maximum experience. So, the variable type is float, and the float variable is our experience variable. For the operation, it is bigger or equal, and the comparer will be the max experience. Now when this condition is true, we can enable our ability panel game object. Now, to disable the panel, we simply copy this component and paste it as a new component. We only need to make a few changes. For the operation, instead of bigger or equal, it is smaller, and for the unity action, instead of enabling the game object, we will disable it. All right, now it's time to create a new script to handle the ability selection. For this we will need two scripts. Let's first create a new C-sharp script and call it Ability Selector. Then let's create another script and call it Ability Selector button. Now let's open the Ability Selector in our code editor. Let's expose a reference to an array of ability data that will contain all available abilities. Let's also expose an array of Ability Selector buttons that will references the buttons in our scene. Finally, Let's expose a float variable for the current experience and another float variable for the max experience. Scriptable objects are assets, so changes are kept in the editor. Therefore, in awake, we will reset all our ability data to make sure the apply count is reset when we test the game. One enable, we set the time scale to zero to pause the game and call a new method, display random abilities. We can go ahead and create it. Finally, on disable, we will make sure to reset the timescale to 1 to unpause the game. Before we implement the display random abilities method, let's quickly implement the ability selector button class. This class won't contain any logic. It will simply display information about an ability and notify the ability selector when it is clicked. First, let's create references for the text components we created earlier, the description and the apply count. Let's also expose a reference to a button property. You can expose properties in the inspector like this as long as the setter is private. It can be pretty useful sometimes, like in this case. Now, let's create an init method that will have a string description and an int apply count as arguments. We can then set the description text to the description argument and make a formatted string for the apply count text. Awesome! We can now go back to our ability selector. Now let's implement the display random abilities method. The idea is to select three random but distinct abilities from our pool and then implement what happens when an ability is selected. Okay, so first, let's make a new list that is a copy of the ability data array. Now let's iterate over the abilities selector buttons. In our case, we have three, so this loop will run three times. Let's select a random ability from our new list. Then, let's initialize our button with this random ability data 
and pass in the description and the apply count. Then, we can add a listener to the on-click event of the button and use an anonymous method to write the logic of what happens when the button is clicked. When the player selects an ability, we want first to call apply on the ability. Then, we want to reset the experience and increase the max experience by a factor, 1.2 for example. This way, each time the player levels up, it will take longer for him to reach the next level. After that, we can remove this ability data from the list so that it cannot be picked again. We must not forget that when we add a listener to the button on click event, we need to make sure to remove it. We can either remove it here or go to our init method of the ability selector button and remove all listener there. Now let's set up our UI elements with the classes we just created. Let's go back to the inspector and open our ability selector button prefab. Let's attach the script. Reference our text components and the button and save the prefab. Now let's select the ability selector and attach the ability selector script. Let's lock the inspector and drag all our ability data in the array. Let's also reference all our ability selector buttons. Finally, let's not forget to reference the experience variable and the max experience variable. All right, we are done. It is time to test now. Before we test, let's re-enable our game over panel. All right, now let's press play. Kill some enemies and gather experience pickups. Okay, our ability selector appears. Let's choose this ability. Awesome, it works. To try again, let's select the experience variable in the project and increase the value until we reach the max experience. Nice, we can debug quickly like this. In the next video, we will implement more complex abilities and tweak the game so that it uses all the elements we created. This video was a bit more complex, but it will make next one much easier. Don't hesitate to leave a comment below and to join our Discord channel. All the useful links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.